Welcome to this special Brightline construction video. This video will show the steps it took to build the Highway 528 tunnel and the Industry Road overpass, together known as the Coco Curve. This video starts in April 2020. Starting on the north side of the 528, we see the location of the tunnel exit. On the south side of the highway, the ground has been cleared, defining what will become the tunnel construction area. Next, we get a first look at the burrow pits where the dirt for construction of ramps comes from. On the right side of the pits is where the ramp will be built for the overpass. By June 10th, site preparation is underway, starting with digging out the location where the tunnel segments will be built. Jumping forward to August 18th, 2020, Site preps continue and the forms for the push walls are started. These walls will be used when it is time to push the three tunnel segments into position under Highway 528. Work on the industry road overpass is also underway. On the east side of industry road, the 528 off ramp is still active keeping work from progressing on the eastern ramp. Traces of the old westbound on-ramp are still visible, as is the start of the new off-ramp. Days later, we see that the floor for what will be the tunnel build site is in work. The tunnel segments will be built on the floor, allowing them to be moved. When I visited the site on September 8th, Plenty of steel rebar had been installed and the floor readied for concrete. It was October 7th before I got back to the build site. By then the floor and push walls had been poured with concrete. Sections 1 and 3 are being built. In this close-up, Section 3 has some sort of plastic to keep its floor separate from the build floor. Section 1 is farther along and plenty of rebar is being put down for its floor. In this October 22nd shot, Tunnel Section 1 has gotten its floor while Section 3 gets its rebar. October 29th finds the walls of Section 1 being built. Section 2 has begun to be framed and Section 3 now has its floor. Five days later, Section 1's walls are taking shape. On the other side of the highway, three distinct ponds are taking shape. By November 27th, two of the ponds are finished. Note the grass around them. Back on the south side, Section 1's walls are almost ready for concrete, and Section 3's walls are progressing. In this top view, the angles of section 1 and 3 ends can be seen. On my December 21st visit, I found that the walls are being constructed for all three sections. Section 3 has got its floor, and the floor for section 2 is well underway. On January 22nd, we see that section 1 and 3 walls are done and section 2 walls are in work. On February 4th, we see that the roofing has begun of section 1. Large concrete beams placed across the walls form the foundation of the roof. By February 10th, all of the beams have been placed on section 1 and most of them have been placed on section 3. Notice the work happening on the berms that will support the push walls. On the other side of the highway, preparations for the tunnel have also begun.
February 15th finds the Section 3 beams are all installed and the side push wall berm is almost done. Over on Section 1, rebar is being installed over the beams before concrete is poured. The just arrived blue equipment belongs to a Truco and will be used in the box jacking operation to move the tunnel boxes. Concrete has been poured, completing Section 1's roof. Roof beams are in place for Sections 2 and 3. Work progresses on the Industry Road overpass. On the east side of Industry Road, the new off-ramp has opened up the space for the new overpass. On February 25th, work has started on Section 2 rebar and the berm behind the main push wall has really grown. The next day, the skid plates used to facilitate the tunnel pushing under the new highway have been placed on Section 1's roof. Over the next several weeks, the tunnel boxes will be completed. On the north side of the highway, preparations also continue. I managed to time my visit on the 9th with Section 3 concrete finishing. This ride looks like it might be some fun work. By March 14th, the box jacking operation is getting ready to begin. We see the Petruco equipment moving into position. The box tops have all been completed. March 15th brings the start of tunnel jacking. We see that Section 1 has been moved about 30 feet since yesterday. They can move it as fast as 3 feet per hour. Traffic has been rerouted overnight to single lanes. Hydraulic rams are used to push the tunnel forward. They're then retracted and inserts put in to allow them to push again. Excavators hand off dirt from one to another in order to remove it from in front of the tunnel. The next morning, Section 1 has been moved clear of Section 2. Digging continues in front of the tunnel. The next step will be to slide Section 2 behind Section 1, then resume pushing and digging. Over the next few days, the skid plate restraining system will be connected to the concrete pads and the ground level blocks by cables. March 20th, we see the 55-gallon drums that contain a red lubricating fluid which will lubricate between the skid plates and the concrete tunnel roofs. The morning of March 22, road building has begun on top of the skid plates. Work continues on attaching the restraining system. Later that day, work on the restraining system continues. The cable to the ground block is visible. The new road is quickly taking shape. By the next morning, asphalt has been laid. Watching this, you see how quickly roadways can be built.
With the restraining system rigged and some road built, they are ready to move forward. On the 24th, we find Section 3 on the move. It will be pushed into Section 2's former spot. One lane of traffic is now open on the new road as the tunnel moves forward. Note the wall holding the remaining lane in place. The red claw is removing sections for the next push. They have removed the retaining wall and are quickly creating another lane. The next day, all traffic is on the new lanes and the westbound lanes are being removed. Over the next several days, the pushing and digging continues. The excavator operators and dump truck drivers are really earning their pay. The third section is added on March 30th. This marks the final stretch of tunnel pushing. Soon the tunnel will be in its final position. By now these fellows are very familiar with moving these supports about. Here they have to bring the fuel to the machines. Pushing and digging continue through the day and night. April 2nd was the last day of tunnel jacking, with the tunnel being pushed into its final position. On top, the red markings left by the skid plates and lube are seen. The morning of April 3rd confirms the end of tunnel jacking. Road building is underway on the westbound lanes. The next morning, traffic is moving on the new lanes. The first lane built has an issue which will have to be fixed. By April 7, all lanes are open. Still missing are the lanes which we use for on-ramps and off-ramps. The tunnel leading edge took some abuse during the move. April 13th finds the Petruco equipment being loaded onto trucks and removed from the area. Dirt is being trucked to the Industry Road overpass to be used there.
The eastern approach ramp to Industry Road overpass is largely done. A new structure is being formed up on top of the tunnel. The new structure is getting concrete today. These guys are really wrestling with this bucket. A hydraulic jackhammer has arrived on the scene to begin breaking up concrete. Both push walls and the floor will be broken up and removed. By April 30th, deconstruction is well underway. The push walls and work floor are being broken up before being trucked off. Over the next month, deconstruction continued. Rebar is being separated from concrete for recycling. The beginning of May brought lots of rain and accommodations had to be made. By May 15th, the hydraulic hammer has made rubble of the concrete structures. The industry road ramps are almost done. Beams across the roads will be installed in the coming months. Here you see a load of rebar headed for the recycling yard. The side of the new road has been stabilized with grass to keep it from collapsing. Little remains by June 3rd, but a few pieces of equipment and a couple of porta johns. By June 11, the cleanup had been wrapped up and the tunnel stands ready for the next phase. Bring on the track. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the construction of the Brightline Tunnel under Highway 528 in Cocoa, Florida. Please click like and subscribe for future updates and check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.